Today we're going to take a look at this filament dryer that was sent to me by FixDry. So if you're interested in a potential new filament dryer, then stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at this filament dryer that was sent to me by a company called FixDry. Now, I have no idea if this is a good filament dryer or a bad filament dryer. I haven't even cracked open the box today, but we're going to take a look at this. Now, as I mentioned, this was sent to me, so this is a review unit that was provided to me at no cost, but that's not going to impact my overall impression or final review of this product. I'm under no obligation to give them praise or anything like that, so you're going to get an honest review as always from me. So. We're going to crack open this box, we're going to see what's included, and then I'm going to take a look at, you know, whatever features there are of this product, and I'll let you know what I think about it in the end. So let's get to it. First thing is we've opened the top, it was just sealed with some plastic tape, so we can pull this out. You can see there's no additional padding here at the top. I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not, so let's pull this out and see what we have. So here is our top piece. That's all one piece, which is nice considering the uh, much more expensive iBoss that I recently purchased. You had to put the top together. So then we do have some packaging, foam packaging here. Looks like for the base unit that is holding that in. And we will slide this out of the box. And then we have some foam there in the bottom. So it looks like the base is held in there pretty well. And I think that is, yeah, that's the rest of what is in there. So we've got the base unit, and then we have a little packet here that has a user's manual. There's a cover, P uh, just one small section of PTFV tube, and that looks like that's about it. So let's take a look at the manual and learn something about the features. It is a fairly basic unit. It has pretty simple controls. So you have a power button right here that is going to turn on the unit. You can see it's going to show you the current temperature inside the unit, and it is also going to show you the relative humidity, and then it shows how much time is on the countdown timer. The functioning of this unit is very simple. I went through the owner's manual here, and it is very basic. It's in, just like many, it's in many languages. It talks about the use of the shroud if you are utilizing this just to dry so that it does not blow in one space because this filament dryer does not rotate your filament but it does have rollers in there so if you are printing while using this and your printer is drawing the filament out then the spool will obviously rotate so it gives you the very basic instructions here and then your methods of operation and then it gives you a little recommended temperature setting and time based on your various different types of filament. That's everything that's included in this booklet. So the operation of the unit. As I said, very simple. You've got your power on off button here and then you have a setting button. If we hit the setting button, it will allow us to set the desired temperature. It only displays in Celsius which at first I was like, how do I set this in Fahrenheit? But then I realized that everything that I do in printing, nothing is in Fahrenheit, it's all in Celsius. All my filament hot end temperatures are in Celsius, drying is in Celsius, so welcome to the metric system. So get used to Celsius. So I can set that, if I hit it again, it'll lock that in. Then we come down to our hours. I can change how many hours I want to do that. Hit it again, it will go to minutes. I can change my minutes, hit it again, and we are set. Now, you can set the time. It, this goes up to 48 hours. And let's see if it has, it does have a fast function. If I go past 48, I believe it says that that will be an indefinite. So it, it will stay, it'll just run forever. That's what the book says. So very simple operation, power setting, plus or minus to set that. So very simple as far as the operation goes there. The display is nice and big. It is quite a bit bigger than what I have on my other filament dryer, the, the iBoss Cyclops, which is about the most comparable. And I will talk about that when I get to the end. So, but big display here, 
with your setting, your filament setting, temperature, your relative humidity, and then your timer, as you can see. So temperature and humidity are in red, your timer is in blue, very simple to use here. On the unit itself, we have two holes in the front. There are two holes in the back. That's where you would, if that's where you decided to run your filament from, depending on how you have your printer set up. This is the small amount of PTFE tube that they include. Originally, I thought, yeah, they should have included more, but honestly, typically your printer is gonna have the PTFE tube. So you may or may not need this at all. If you do, you can readily buy some. I'll put a link in the uh, description of what I use just in case you need some more PTFE tube. So you've got two holes in the back, you've got two holes in the front, and then there are six holes in the top. Everybody has different uh, configurations of how they would like to set up their printers. So this does have quite a number of options for you. Let's take a look at the uh, top of the enclosure and then we'll also take a look at the inside and we'll flip this thing all around and give you a full view of the unit. Taking a look at the top of the unit here, again, you can see you've got the three holes in the front, three holes in the back, and then you do have some vent holes on the top. Now, one of my initial impressions was, hey, unlike some of the other filament dryers that I've received where they give you these little plugs where you can plug these off, um, I then realized that the, the iBoss Cyclops has a similar hole pattern here and they don't give you anything to close that off. So you have to be able to let the moisture out when you're heating your filament. So this is a requirement. But once you do finish your drying cycle, obviously moisture can come back in there. So the, mo the most expensive unit I have, the iBoss Polyphemus, it does have a, a little rotating vent where you can open it when you're drying and then close it when you're done. So not necessarily a knock on this one. This is a, a budget unit and I'll talk about the price when we get to the uh, final thoughts. So next let's, let's take a look at the inside of the unit itself. Now we are taking a look at the inside of the unit. It is very basic. So here we have the heater element on the bottom side of this. If I turn the unit around you can see that we have the fan. So the fan is going to suck air from underneath the unit. It does have about maybe, it's a little less than an inch of clearance here on the bottom. It does have rubber feet down here on all four feet. And then you've got your product sticker there. You've also got some additional vents here around the unit. So the fan's gonna be sucking from the bottom and blowing straight in through the fan. We do have some pretty wide rollers here. Uh, we'll see how the filament fits in there. Uh, the bearings, the bearings are visible, although you can't, I'm not gonna try and pop this apart, but unless these are easily removed, you're not gonna have access to grease or lubricate uh, the bearings, but that's probably not something that you really need to worry about anyway. And then this is the shroud that they give you. The shroud is going to fit in those four holes, just like that. And again, they recommend that you put the shroud in place if you are drying but not using your filament because otherwise this hot air is going to blow directly on the bottom side of your filament, which does not rotate. So you're cooking one spot of your filament um, and you're not going to have that even heat distribution. With the shroud in place, you are diverting that airflow and that is going to allow the air, that's not going to, stay in place but you can see this is slightly bent or curved and so it's going to direct the airflow up and kind of around your filament so and then here at the front of the unit you have a little sensor and that's probably where your temperature and humidity sensor is located overall this the finish on this is pretty nice it actually makes the other units that i have look kind of budget it's got, this is actually a metallic finish on here. And as you can see on this seam back here, it is actually a metal plate that is bent around the plastic. So you have this kind of brushed aluminum look. So if that's important to you, then this is a pretty nice looking unit. The last thing I wanna cover is the lid and how it attaches. All right, let's put some filament in here. 
So the lid, I'll tell you the lid, the first time when I pulled it out of the plastic and I went attached to attach it to the base, I thought there is something wrong with this. It doesn't fit. I, maybe I got a bad one. I actually spent about one or two minutes trying to get the lid on. Um, it just turns out that it's a, it's a very tight fit. So I lined it up in the back and if I just push down with a little bit of force, it pops right in. So it's actually got a really good seal. Now that's good, but it also makes removing, if you just pull it up from the top, it's, it's gonna take a little force. You saw how I did that kind of just with my thumbs, pushing straight up there. That makes it not too uh, difficult to remove. So it's not a flaw. It just has a very low margin for error. It's, it's a tight seal. So again, the filament is gonna fit right in there. You've got probably a good, just shy of maybe 10 millimeters, a centimeter of play on either side. So you could fit, you know, various size spools in here. Obviously this is designed to do two at one time. And if you had one of those, I'm not, 100% positive if you could put like one of the, the, the larger, you know, multi, I, what is it, a five kilogram spool or not, it, because the top, it may, it may exceed that uh, space there. But the rollers seem to work just fine. So I don't think you'd have any kind of excessive drag if you were actually printing uh, from this unit. So once you have your filament in place, then it's just going to be a matter of putting the lid back on. And like I said, if you just kind of line up the back there, push the front down, and then we have it uh, there. I would say so far, I'm very impressed with this unit. The only detractor that I would uh, that I see that the other units actually. The IBOS Cyclops does have a built-in hygrometer on the front, so it's kind of nice to be able to just walk by. Like even now I can look at it and it says 28% for that unit. This one always sits out. You can see my room is at 49%. If I want to check the humidity level inside this unit, then I'm going to have to turn this on and then it's going to slowly come up to whatever the humidity is inside the unit. So that's really my only negative, but that's very minor. And even the uh, IBOS Polyphemus that I have over there that you've seen me review on the channel before, it operates very similar to this one. It does have the built-in hygrometer to display your relative humidity, but you have to turn that one on to see it as well. So very, very minor. If you want to call that an inconvenience, Maybe you could, but really definitely not a deal breaker on this whatsoever. So there you have it. We've taken a look at this unit. We've gone from the unboxing. We've taken a look at the outside. We've taken a look at the inside. We've talked about the uh, features. And again, I'm pretty impressed with this. You know, initially when they reached out to me and they proposed that I do the review on this unit, I thought, you know, it's just, it's kind of a low cost uh, filament dryer. There's probably nothing to really be excited about here. It probably doesn't stack up to the, you know, either the ones that I have that I purchased myself that were quite a bit more expensive. But honestly, now that I have this and seeing it and what it does, especially for the price, which I'll talk about here at the end, I'm really impressed with this unit. The only two little gripes that I have are, one, it is a little bit tricky to, to take off and put back on the lid, but that's because it's got a pretty tight seal. And then I do like having the ability to just see what the, the humidity is inside the unit, you know, without turning it on. But those are very, very minor gripes. The, you know, if you want more features like the rotating spools that my Polyphemus does, or I think the Cyclops has some memory settings that you can, you know, program, but honestly, I don't remember how to access those. I went over and I took a look. It's got one more button, but that's not it. You know, if you change filaments often and you need to know what to, to set, you know, recommended settings, you can either have the manual sitting right there. You could take a picture or make a copy of this and tape it onto the top of it. Um, it's really not that big a deal. The, the Polyphemus does have, set, have settings. It's got memory settings for everyone, so you can just select what you want. But again, that's a much more expensive unit. So minor gripes on this. Overall, I'm going to give this, actually, I don't know if I've ever, you know, rated anything 
as high. I mean, it's, I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. The, I'm taking off like half a star for those two little minor gripes, but honestly, like, I don't think other than that, there's much to complain about with this unit. I did, I was starting to record this a little bit earlier and I looked at the uh, display and I saw that, you know, right now the temperature is set to 65 degrees for PETG. Um, and you'll see the temperature cycles. It, it'll go, it'll drop down a little bit, but that's a heater turning on and then it turns off, you know, and then things cool down and the heater turns on again. That's how heaters work. So initially that threw me for a little bit of a loop, but you can see it's at 66 degrees and 27% humidity and I've got a, time, a four hour time timer going, so it's been running for a few minutes now. But it's very basic, very simple operation. Now, let me talk about pricing. Like I said, they did send this to me and I will put a, an affiliate link in there. I have yet to make any money on anything that I have an affiliate link for outside of Amazon. So I'm not giving this a high rating because I hope that you rush out and buy this particular unit. I'm telling you that I would very much so, if this was available when I was purchasing my other dryers, I would have definitely gone with this had I seen you know, a favorable review. So the normal price on this fixed dry unit is $79.99, and they offer free shipping. Now, I do ha they have provided a uh, code, so if you use, I'll put it on the screen, but it's DTCH, directed tech, or D, yeah, DTCH10, that's going to save you 10%. So that makes this print or this filament dryer only $71.99 after your discount code there. I've been comparing it because because it's what I have. I've been comparing this to the two IVOS units, uh, like I said, that I purchased myself. The Cyclops, right now, if you go to their website, it's on sale at $109.99. So essentially $110 with free shipping. And the Polyphemus is $139.99. So comparing this unit to the Cyclops, this unit is $38 less and it really does everything that that dryer does and it looks better. So there you have it. And add a, you know, tack on another 30, so $68 less than the Polyphemus. And the, really the difference there is displays a little bit different. It does have those memories and it does have the ability to rotate your filament as it dries. But if you're interested in that, you can take a look at my review on that. There's some issues with that. I had to print my own TPU sleeves to make that work reliably. So again, very happy with this unit. Thank you very much, Fix Drive, for reaching out to me and, and offering this unit so that I could review it. I'm very happy. And oh, by the way, they do make other products and that code, the DTCH10, will work on their website uh, to save you 10% off any one of their products. So there you have it, the review of the Fix Dry filament dryer. I'll put the exact product link and all of that kind of stuff in the description, but I'm a pretty happy camper. So if you like what I've done here on the channel, if you'd like to keep seeing reviews, you know, the, the more interaction we have, please, you know, post a comment down below. I always forget to say that at the beginning, but if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel, hit the little notification bell and hit the like button there. Um, so that my channel can keep on growing. The more my channel grows, the more these companies see me, the more they reach out, and I have the opportunity to collaborate with them so that I can provide you with reviews because the whole idea is to get both my channel, their products out to you so that you can make an informed decision. Uh, I will never compromise my integrity just because somebody sends me something. That doesn't mean that they're gonna get a great review. If this thing didn't work, we'd be giving it a thumbs down, but it works great. So they're getting a thumbs up, but that's it for this review. As always, keep on learning, burning, and we'll keep growing this channel together. Take care, everyone.